Welcome everyone to Charts Focus 1 where we teach you how to work hard and trade smart. In this live stream recap video, I want to talk about how we caught three different trades, two being swing trades and one being a day trade, that returned double digits. Now the three trades were on ticker symbols SOXL, TSLL, and OKTA, and they returned 50% plus 65% plus and 50% plus respectively. Now in hindsight, I could have held two out of the three for much longer, especially that SOXL since it turned into a day trade. But if you're never happy with your returns, especially double digit returns on a day trade, when will you ever be satisfied, right? So if you're ever questioning your returns, especially after a double digit return, like the ones that we got from over the weekend as well, you should know that you're getting very, very greedy. And eventually that greed will spill onto your next trade, which can definitely harm your capital or any profits that you have previously made. Now with that in mind, let's go over each trade. For this video, I will treat you guys with a little sneak peek of the specific channel in the private CFO Discord where all of these amazing swing trades go down and show you the exact time of entries and the specific option contracts that we used. Okay, let's start off with SOXL, which you guys can see on your screen. So after last week's midweek pullback that started on Wednesday, I saw that this semiconductor three times leveraged bull ETF, what a mouthful, looked a lot better compared to all the other names that we were looking at this week. Why? Well, it pulled back to the daily 50 SMA and held onto it without much of a larger sell-off. So this dark blue line right here. And instead, it continued to bounce at the 50 SMA, giving it grounds for more buyers to come in. And that's exactly what happened and that's exactly where we got involved. So instead of falling all the way back down to the daily 21 SMA, which is my light blue line here, which occurred for a lot of stocks, including the broader markets S&P 500, it held onto my 10 SMA, which is my red line over here, while retesting the daily 50 SMA. To me, this was a very clear indication of relative strength during that midweek pullback, which is why in hindsight, I should have held longer instead of making it into a double digit return day trade. It's that shoulda, woulda, coulda moment that every single trader feels no matter how long you've been trading in the stock market. Now, here is where we entered. If we take a look at this specific channel, the CFO Pro Traders channel here, okay, we got in at January 20th, 2023, which was last Friday at 6.58 a.m. And we got specifically the 14 strike call contracts that expire on February 17th. Again, 14 call strike contracts that expire on February 17th. And we got in at 6.58 a.m. Okay, I repeated myself so that you guys can remember that. And so if we put that information on the 15 minute time frame, all right? So as shown by the small arrows here, this is where we entered on this candlestick. So my initial entry point that I wanted everyone to get into was over $12. However, we got in a little bit early, maybe around 11.94, uh, 1995-ish is what I remember. Um, but this is where we got in. And the reason for that is that I suspected that we were going to start making some sort of a base here. And what base? Well, specifically an ascending triangle base. 
And so as we continue to move up and down and oscillate on this ascending trend line of support, we moved slightly lower. And on this candlestick, and as shown right over here, okay, we added more at 7.03 a.m. to that specific SOXL or SOXL swing trade. Okay. And so right here is where we got in and we actually went in again at 11 point, uh, I believe it was like 83-ish or 85-ish. Doesn't really matter, but uh, all that matters is that we got in on this candlestick, right? And so after this move up higher, when we saw buyers coming back in around that 11.80 support level, which was also a previous level of support on the previous day on Thursday, we continued to move away and away and away. And ultimately, we ended up turning this swing trade into a day trade. So right over here, as we continue to go up higher and higher and higher, okay, uh, the returns went from 5% to 10% to 20% to 30%. And eventually I said, SOXL, this is enough of a push. I will just convert this into a day trade taking everything off for 50%. So this one, obviously, if you guys take a look, right, we had our final exit near the high of the day on this candlestick. And in hindsight, we could have held that as a swing trade because on Monday, which was yesterday, we pushed way higher than the previous high of the day on Friday. And so on this candlestick, we could have probably made triple digit returns. And again, this is where that shoulda, woulda, coulda situation comes out over and over again. And, uh, you know, it's one of those moments when you may seem like you've missed out on a lot. But again, double digit returns on a single day trade is amazing. So if you guys are ever beating yourself up because you didn't hold through over the weekend or just the next day, don't do that. If you had great double digit returns on that trade already, you should congratulate yourself. That's an amazing return on such a risky market environment. Now, the only reason why I want to exit was that in the event that we pull back over the weekend, because we pull back on Wednesday, right after hitting this huge level of resistance at 13.50. And so there's a possibility that the high of Friday could have been a second lower high point compared to the first high pivot point of 13.76, which is on this specific daily candlestick. Okay, so this resulted into a day trade, but we got over 50% plus returns. All right, so the second trade, which turned out to be a great swing trade was TSLL. Now, this one was actually entered a few minutes before SOXL. So if we take a look back on the CFO Discord here. Okay. We entered into TSLL a few minutes before we entered SOXL. So this one actually turned out to be a great swing trade. So we got in at 6.45 a.m. on the same day, last Friday. So let's check it out. On the 15 minute time frame, okay, we got in right on this candlestick, okay? So why did it enter in here? Well, first of all, we're holding 6.55, and this was a previous level of intraday support and resistance. If you take a look past here, it's a level of support and a level of resistance on Thursday, last Thursday. And so after looking at the first 15 minute candlestick form, I knew that there are buyers. How? Well, because of the long bottom wick or long shadow at the bottom of this specific 15 minute candlestick. And I knew that buyers were here also because of the 10 and 21 SMAs that are curling up higher and it looked like the price wanted to stay above 
all my major SMAs on the 15 minute time frame, which was the 10, 21, and then eventually my 50. And so on this 15 minute candlestick, I basically waited for confirmation that we wanted to bounce away from all of my three SMAs that have coiled together like this. And I was watching for us to bounce away from 6.50, which we eventually did. And we're able to hold above 6.55. Now, uh, I did get in exactly um, at the formation of this candlestick, which was uh, 6.56, right? I open, okay? And uh, obviously I didn't get out even if we went lower because why would I get out after only what? Uh, three to four cent move to the downside, All right? That wouldn't make much sense. So, um, you know, uh, this is one of those moments where uh, you can't panic, right? You need to have a game plan beforehand, have a specific point of entry, a stop loss, and a target. So if you guys are afraid of, you know, only a, a couple cents move where you enter and it moves a little bit lower from your entry price, you should reconsider your risk that you're going into that specific trade and you should reconsider your game plan as well if you even have one before going to a trade. So I was not really afraid of this six cent move all day back down to hit 6.50, okay, on this low of this candlestick. So uh, eventually we're able to continue up higher and eventually we saw our returns going up and up and up, just like how SOXL did. So TSLL went to uh, you know, 10%, 15%, 20%, and eventually, all right, this is where we got out. So we got out yesterday on Monday. TSLL up over 65% plus. Now you can start taking some profits into strength, and personally for me, I got out of everything. So 65% plus swing trade. And uh, this one was absolutely amazing over the weekend because again, uh, we're able to get out um, uh, around 7.40 and obviously, um, you know, right at the market open, okay? Uh, but, you know, it's one of those trades again that I could have held longer because we squeezed past a daily level of resistance of 7.40 and that was my initial target. But again, it's another, it's another shoulda, woulda, coulda situation and you do not want to be caught up in that because you're going to let greed come into your next trades, right? I can't stress that enough. Okay, so lastly, okay, last but not least, we have OKTA. So this one was in the CFO Swing and Watch newsletter for weeks as we have been watching it since it started this very, very nice daily base chart pattern. Now, this showed us that we can finally see a potential accumulation phase to end the rough selling that this name endured for a year. So if you take a look on the weekly time frame for OKTA, this one has been a free fall, right? It's just a waterfall of the price since uh, early uh, 2022 and also um, around late 2021. So Hopefully, this base turns out to be a great, great uh, uh, moment for this name to accumulate a lot of buyers and eventually uh, start heading back to the upside uh, since we're still looking at this name and since it's still making this amazing base. Now, the reason why we got into OKTA last Friday is this. So let me show you guys the actual trade. All right. So after taking the... Uh, SOXL and TSLL trades, we got into OKTA high risk swing trade, 70 call strike contracts that expire on December, excuse me, January 27th. So the only reason why I said it was a high risk swing trade was that, well, the contracts that we're getting expires next week, right? Relative to uh, back on Friday. So uh, obviously, this is a very, very risky trade, especially as a swing trade, since the contracts were expiring the next Friday or this Friday, if you're wanting to speak in current uh, time or in perspective. Um, but, you know, this was uh, something that I want to get into because I saw good strength in OKTA. 
So we got in exactly at 11.39 a.m. So at 11.39 a.m., uh, make sure you guys remember that time. And let's put that onto the 15 minute time frame as usual. So we got in right over here. And why? All right, why this small 15 minute candlestick? Well, first of all, as seen on the 15 minute time frame, we're looking at a very nice ascending triangle base, right? An ascending triangle chart pattern. And you, sh you should be seeing a, a, a pattern here, right? Because on uh, TSLL, right, we had somewhat of a higher low pattern here of the price trend, and which eventually allowed us to have a nice uh, breakout above 6.55. And also for SOXL, we're also looking at a higher low, which actually allowed us to see an ascending triangle chart pattern form as well. So all of these three trades were similar in the price trend and in the chart pattern itself. So SOXL and OKTA were very, very similar. But at the same time, TSLL showed almost the same type of price trend. We were making higher lows and eventually higher highs. And so all of these were showing great, great uh, factors of an uptrend and something that you would always want to see in a nice, clear uptrend. So OKTA, 68.50 was our huge level of intraday level of resistance, right? And as we were forming this ascending triangle chart pattern, I said, look, if we decide to uh, move over 68.50, I'm going to get in, right? I have to get in because throughout the entire day on Friday, the software name was showing incredible strength while the entire tech sector was kind of lagging while other ind individual names were pulling back harder. So, okay, TA, we got in those 70 strike call contracts that expire on January 27th. And we got in at this candlestick, this very, very tiny candlestick. And I believe if I remember correctly, my entry point was around 68.43-ish, uh, okay? Now, this is also a very early entry. Why? Well, first of all, this is a big base, all right? This is a multi-week base that we've been forming, and we've been riding above the daily 10 and 21 SMAs. And I've already told this to my CFO Swing Watch members. This week, since OKTA is also a name that we're watching for this specific week, um, that if you don't want to be involved in the chop that usually comes, right, as we're moving sideways and we're forming this uh, nice base or accumulation phase, okay, you should just wait until we're able to see a breakout over this base. And what is that uh, breakout number? Well, specifically 72. And that's the reason why I gave my members an entry, uh, a confirmation long entry over 72, especially if they did not want to get involved with the sideways action because the sideways action can definitely kill premiums on whatever contract that you're using especially the weekly contracts and that's another big reason why i said uh, and i told my cfo swing watch members on friday that this is going to be a very high risk swing plus it was an over the weekend swing as well so this one resulted in a great 50 percent win for us right 50 percent plus return all right if you guys see right over here okay right over here, right, it went up 40%, and eventually uh, we took profits at 50%, and now we're looking to roll up into new contracts. All right, so that is it for this video. If you liked what you heard, please leave a thumbs up down below, and if you're new here, check out the description box below for the subscription link to the CFO Swing and Watch newsletter, newsletter, especially if you guys want access to the CFO uh, Discord as well. Make sure you guys check out the other live stream recap videos to continue your learning in trading. Thank you so much for watching.